Hey guys, All In Crypto here and welcome back ladies and gentlemen for another YouTube video. Today, back by popular demand, I'm sure many of you recognize him. We have Francis Hunt, the market sniper, the crypto sniper, and last but not least, the reset sniper. Thank you very much for coming back on Francis. Pleasure to be with you guys. Fantastic. And the pleasure is all mine. It's always um, great having you on here, given the wealth of knowledge that you have in regards to the macro landscape and each asset class individually and tying them all together, which has been of great use to myself and I'm sure everybody that watches this channel. So there's been a lot going on, Francis. Shall we dive into some of it in this video? Indeed. Why not? Fantastic. Um, the, the key thing that for me, many of people that are in the financial system really need to realize is that the financial system is actually failing. It's a debt-based system. A pound is borrowed into existence with an interest rate. A dollar is borrowed into existence. That first money is borrowed ursurely into the system. You mentioned, uh, you heard me recently referring to the, the faith of Islam not accepting ursury as a concept. Uh, and also the only time Jesus publicly was violent was the, the whipping of the money lenders that were impoverishing the masses from inside that temple of God. Um, and these are lessons <laughs> that uh, it sounds all biblical. I sound like one of these Baptist right wing redneck preachers, uh, but there is real spiritual elements to the foundations that you lay on the system. This at inception system was designed to fail. Because what actually happens is as you borrow something into existence and it straight away comes with a contract of interest, you are committed to expanding the amount of currency in existence so that that interest payment on the original loan can actually be earned. Because if you just borrow a million bucks and you put a contract out to pay it back and 10%, where does the extra 10% come from? So it becomes a shell game with lots of other participants. And so the way you accommodate that is you keep expanding the flow. So you're in this universe that just perpetually expands. So the debt gets bigger as the money issuance gets bigger. In other words, everything is a T-bill account. There's a liability and an asset. So when you create one, you create the other. Um, if I lend you money to buy a house, you have an asset in the cash and then you convert it into a property. But to me, as the bank, you're my assets because you owe me that money uh, back and I am your liability. So you have two T accounts with those uh, elements. Now, what ends up happening is I'm ursury extracting on you. So you actually owe me more money than what you actually paid for the house. Uh, and so this is, in essence, an ursury system. And what we get is we expand currency and it's designed eventually to get so overladen with debt that eventually it's unsustainable. And the Reinhardt and Rogot uh, studies have shown once you get to about 90%, the productivity of new debt in terms of GDP stimulus has fallen well below a dollar of debt produces a dollar of output. So what you end up getting is deeply inefficiently issued debt that doesn't add much money. It's kind of like turning the heaters on and spending thousands to warm the house up, but you've taken the roof off. Um, it's deeply inefficient system. And just for that fireball, you can throw a million in the fireplace and those notes will create a temporary fireball and then you'll be freezing five minutes later. It's not a good use of a million bucks to have uh, a nanosecond of excessive heat in a fireball and then be back to freezing again. Uh, and so we're getting these deep inefficiencies. So the failure of the debt system, and this is something so few people are calling and I think maybe it's because we're not mainstream. Maybe some of them don't get it or there are mouthpieces for the system that doesn't want you to know how deep into reset you truly are. The debt system is failing. The Italian debt is running. This is whilst Europe is committed to stopping QE and raising rates. So now they're doing, well, we're going to try to do that, but we're also going to try to do that. That is trying to be a fat boy slim. You, go, you don't get to be uh, both. You're one or the other. And this is why we talk about hyper stagflation. You're actually deep in recessionary territory in terms of your demand curve. Less and less goods are being demanded. So this is price access. This is quantity of goods. You're 101. This is economics 101, really. It's really that simple. You have a curve like that. At a certain price, only so much quantity is offered. At a, at a lower price, a greater quantity. As the price gets lower, the quantity gets higher. So you have essentially a, a demand curve like that. And what's actually happening is that demand curve is being pushed left. 
people are buying less and less at high prices. And even at the lower prices, the quantity is getting less because disposable income isn't there. And what you're now seeing is the supply curve, which goes exactly the other way. People that are making stuff don't want to make stuff to be paid a pittance for it. They'll make virtually none of it. Um, but as they're making more profit, they'll supply more. So as the price goes up, the quantity they'll supply is more. But if there's not, the demand won't meet. So the equilibrium of the market is on the Rolex point right there, where the two lines cross. Um, and what we're actually happening is your demand curve being pushed to the left because the consumer is being crushed. And so what does the supply curve do? Well, that's why you're getting lockdowns in China. They don't want to lose pricing power. So they reduce supply to match the reduced lower limited demand. So your demand curve is going left and the supply curve goes left with it. So you're still at the same price elevation, the Rolex height, but you uh, now got much less supply. The quantity being bought is significantly less. So they are matching the contraction in consumer demand with reduced supply. But that is just trying to hold on to pricing power. Remember, the East is your maker of everything. And your Triffin's dilemma is that the Americas must, as the base currency nation, be exporters of dollars and net importers of goods. So they buy Mercedes from Germany, they buy Toyotas from Japan, and they buy Kias from South Korea. And what we've essentially had is a greater indebted nation that is more formally known to be indebted, Japan, is in an outright collapse in terms of what they've chosen to do. The Japanese have 279% debt. Just Google it, visual um, debt by nation. Um, and so, but the difference compared to America is that they've funded their debt by selling that debt to their local population. America has had the globe bought by its debt instruments and relies on international buyers as well as local market. The Japanese are largely pretty insular. It's been owned by little old ladies. And they have an inverted demographics. They're having less than one baby, 0.91 babies. Only South Korea is less. So they've got an inverted demographics, a huge pension pool, all in bonds for their pension future. But Japan is creating so much new money and debt. Every time you create money, you're creating debt, the liability, the asset. So how you, supply and demand dictates an excessive supply of something should see the value collapse. But they've held a conspiring manipulation over the market to hold bond values exceedingly high up. So the yield paid on them is very low. When you've created so much debt, you can't afford to pay the interest at normal price discovery levels. So you fake it by manipulation, printing more money, holding the value up, keeping the rates at which you have to pay on it really far down. The Japanese pension class goes instantly bust if they let it have a true trajectory. So what we're actually seeing is they are monetizing the Japanese, they're creating yen and buying their own debt. They're staying at 0.25s and 0.3s on their 10 year. But what's actually happening is the debt has really turned in America and the yield is absolutely running. So people can buy dollars and have dollar debt and earn three and a half percent and have a currency going up, or they can stay in yen and have 0.2% and watch the currency collapse. So you're losing on two fronts in an environment where we certainly have double digits going on 20% by shadow stats uh, and alleged nine in Britain, eight point whatever you want uh, by Bureau of Labor stats. So you actually have system failure happening right now and that is because and we're as i say our, our biggest call we don't get credit for is the turn in the bond market and the covid events were the big uh, blow off we've got guys like hunter talking about final blow offs um to still occur on uh, equity which in essence is saying you've got to still have a melt up and i said you had your melt up you had it with COVID. You can go and look at any of the indices. We created 7 trillion in an instant and it all needed a home. Where do you think it ended up? It ended up in assets price inflation. So inflation isn't just the cost of bread and milk and sugar at the layman. That comes later. The commodity is the last to move. It's called a commodity because it's commoditized. It is made mass. It's very tight price to quantity. It's very hard to earn more for your beef because people just grow more cows. You know, they have babies, you feed them, you don't cull them, you pick a bigger herd. It's very, very competitive markets. Commoditized markets are for things where there are no super normal profits. 
But so they move last. Your inflation moves last. You've already had in terms of prices, food prices, you've already had hyperinflation in assets because you've had unbelievable valuations on tech stocks. And despite this correction, you've only just come lower in terms of GDP, market cap of stock markets to GDP percentage has only just come below the dot-com peak, the previous high on the NASDAQ stocks. So you're at around some crazy percent, 180 uh, at one point over 200. And the, the only other time it was that high was at the peak dot-com. So when you think of that, the question you've come to me is about crypto because the channel is a crypto channel, but the understanding has to be macro to truly understand how much further can crypto fall if the tech stocks still need a major revaluation to the downside. Well, you've seen what's happened to ARK. You need Tesla and Apple to do an ARK and ARK to be a penny stock. That's the true full scale of it. And what happens when debt fails? It's the death of money because going back to that T bill, if I don't pay my debt and I declare bankruptcy, which many companies and individuals will be doing, and I go starving and I go to government and I want handouts, and it's a social welfare system, you're in Britain, you get whatever, whatever, job seekers allowance, uh, you're in America or whatever, in Germany, very social, you'll have some sort of thing, full, full forms out, comply, comply, do whatever. What ends up happening is your workforce disappears, your tax take disappears, your corporate profits disappears because nobody's buying anything uh, and your welfare spikes. So you go into a super debt as a government a creation mode because you're now spending more and getting in less to be the buffer of your citizens. So how's that good for a debt market that's already spilling? So what you actually have is absolute asset class contagion. And, you know, I, I actually had a bank today that said, we will need to check with our counterparty if they will allow you to buy gold. Wow. That, that of course, is in your interest for them to do that, right? <laughs> so I'm let's be clear. Do. No debt, good bank accounts all over. And I need permission on how I spend my money on an asset that is physical, off-grid, non-digitized, that will still be there if they do an amazing, all of the sudden, just in time, bank hack as the debt markets are collapsing and bank hack, banks collapse. Don't forget, debt collapse is banking system collapse. The entire creation of money is the commercial banks are the intermediaries for the central banking cartel. They are part of the cartel. They're just uh, platoon sergeants instead of captains. That's all. So in the end, they, they create money under the remit and guise of central banking uh, rule. A banking license is a license to print money, in essence, providing you've been permissioned by your captain. So in essence, creating a loan is expanding the monetary supply. If those, that makes your assets and liabilities grow, you're a bigger organization. But if suddenly that asset re-rates to next to zero and the person who signed in on the loan no longer can pay it and he throws the keys at you, Good luck, you now own a very low value asset and the liability that you have is far larger. So what we're actually getting is deflation and money dying because those loans die when they, when they don't get paid, they have to get written off. And that's when the banks get very pissed off and they, they, you, know, they, you get the red letters and all of those people that have had to experience that. So there's gonna be a lot of mental health issues. There's gonna be a lot of other things going on with this. You have to work at your mental health. You need to stay strong. You need to build wealth. And ideally, I'm very fortunate. I run my own business. We are booming because we've been accurate when everyone else has been inaccurate. And that's because we understand where we are, not because we're geniuses and we're prepared to think the unthinkable. All things will pass. Expansive universe monetary and debt proliferation schemes with ever channel lower of the last 40 years from the Falker years of interest rates eventually reaches its nadir. And then you get a reversal. And technical analysis is my friend. And as we've said before, we called this reversal. And I'll just do a quick share screen because I've shown this chart so many times. I'm going to keep putting it in front of people's face. Because when people say, but who never, nobody ever saw it. I want my name in digital history just for the plaudits and the pride of my, my, my offspring to say, this was a turn in the debt system. This is log scale. Is it? Yes, it is now. 
That is an absolute final percentage-based capitulation in the 10-year, one of the most common. And it occurred in the single largest economic orchestrated event that has ever been perpetuated in, against an entire goddamn globe. Shut every single goddamn SME down. Stop people, independent contractors from working. Only the oligarchy, corporal Walmarts and Amazon function because on CNN news, Amazon takes special care in their packaging so that you will not get sick with a COVID pandemic. Oh, so you have news media running ads for you and you get a capitulation in rates. Um, and we've had the 3% we showed that this was super stimulatory rate zone. When we went into the 2008 depression, it was a depression that nobody called a depression. You only recognize depressions in hindsight. In 1933, they didn't call it a depression until quite some time after. So you've been in super stimulatory rate uh, environment during this period. Let me just uh, box it in for you. And we've drawn this a number of times. This is super stimulus. And eventually the system doesn't play anymore. A whole bunch of people realize at round about the same time that there's immense inflation and it's gone from assets eventually into the consumer commoditized items, which is the last place where inflation eventually shows up. And it is a key because it shows that uh, we're seeing some moves, interestingly enough, oil down probably means 75 basis points is coming. Um, well, so I, I think we are uh, talks about that being leaked. Um, that there were 75 basis, uh, basis points coming. But I'm always very cautious about leaks because- often, Oh, yes, you know, there's a lot of orchestrated leaks and fake narratives. I wouldn't, yeah, don't trade on news. No. So the super stimulatory pink box, we've reversed out of this with such momentum. Don't forget you first properly dropped into the zone over here. Properly dropped into it. You dipped into it with a toe there and there. But you've do dropped into it and stayed below. And this 3% has been a key level on a sustained basis. So if I take all my cokey pen draws, and this has come from super high levels, you capitulate when you eventually clear uh, and end a, a bull market in bonds. This is a bull market in bonds because it's a bear market in yields. So the inverse correlation, I've got to keep reminding people that are not familiar with bonds. And then you've come up and you've smashed this layer, these two lines, the red and green line, you've smashed it with momentum. And that is a major turn. And we had our first upside HVF. All HVF methods principles, uniquely determined, created technical analysis system by myself for capturing major turns in markets, fast moving breakouts with low risk and expansive reward. All our rules are coming true in front of your eyes. And we came out and we said this, you, and we said it in 2022, the second half of 2022, we asked a question in the first half and we stuck our neck out and asserted it. And that was the time when I was like, buy bonds, wear diamonds for the first time. And I was like, no, 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 eventually this ends. Eventually this ends and it's happened. Now you've had all of this momentum. TLT, we had a head and shoulder on it. And this is where the buy bonds, uh, wear diamonds brigade were talking. And as I say, if we just, uh, I've deleted all the, I hope I haven't, I think I have. Uh, we, ha we have what's called in the HVF method, the final upside HVF that isn't, that is a first inverted in a new trend. It is a deeply ascending. So the bottoms are being bought up by the damn brigade. You've got an absolute slap in the face there a blow off and slap in the face. All markets will typically end a long cyclical macro move with a blow off to the upside. Think the dot-com final mega moon where no one could bear not to be in. Never mind the price, just buy me in as much as I can get. Here, yeah, I'll give you more money. It's just the, the best thing since sliced bread. That is when you get the slap in the face and you get a high slung structure, which is the first in a new trend. We got the buy bonds where diamonds first call over there by what I'd call a counter indicator. We got a second call for buy bond wear diamonds over here at the neckline of the head and shoulders. Oh, bonds have really got cheap. This is a head and shoulder cyclical reversal. This is TLT, by the way, it's a fund. It's an ETF full of yep. long-term debt. The first, so that's the asset the first time This I is actually, just a fund. The first time I actually had you on the show, um, we hadn't, or we may have just dipped a toe below this head and shoulders. 
And you were calling yeah. back then for this going a lot lower. And here we are, along with the equity market, the NASDAQ head and shoulders, the S&P head and shoulders, you know, there's the, the serious, serious issues here. And one thing that I keep getting is, oh, well, the last time we were down this much, you know, it wasn't long before the Fed stepped in and sort of, they can't do that this time. This is nothing about what's happening today has been mirrored, like you say, for 40 years prior. This is a, as you're saying, a capitulation event leading into reform of the actual financial system. That's what you're calling, and I'm very much with you on that. This is what we've been saying since 2020. I started doing the shows with you recently, and we'd already broken that. At least we were by the head and shoulder triggering. And we'd actually been saying that since our inverted ATVF. Um, the first ascending in a new train. So you caught the tail end of this view, but you're still early by even considering this. This is bond performance. This is an index of bond uh, performance, the number of bonds, market value, duration, through all years, the best 95, the next worst 99 when everyone was in dot-com equities. So the 60-40 portfolio principle has been at 60% of your money in equities and in the bad years in equities, you'll actually have an up year in bonds that will reduce the overall volatility of your portfolio. And when equities have two or three bad years, possibly, your bonds are going up because everyone afraid goes into the safer instrument. This is over because you are done with this 40-year cycle channel of reducing interest rates, which is pro-liquidity. The minute you start tightening and going the other way, that is increasing rates, decreasing liquidity, both markets go down. The 60-40 uh, principle that is espoused by every asset manager is purely for this 40-year BTFD meme. It's not an investment strategy. It's a BTFD meme. You always buy bonds on dips and they always end up coming back up. You always buy equities on dips, they always end up coming back. Until the cycle ends and they don't and you have contraction in money and you have debt failing and you have money disappearing. The money that you proliferate is disappearing because it could never be paid back and assets are re-rating. I mean, you look at valuations on Tesla, you even look at valuations on cash cows like Apple. They've barely started to truly correct. So first, the most flaky ones go. It's when the blue chip kings have lost 55, 65 goddamn percent. You know you're in the meat of your bear market. So contemplate crypto in this environment. Michael Saylor and everything he's done, he has, Bitcoin was born in quantitative easing, one, two, three, and four. Reflation, proliferation of fiat as a risk on asset in a time when money was being thrown into the sky and into the system we, to reflate. We actually spoke, uh, we've previously spoken about this, how coincidental it was that Bitcoin popped up in 2008. I mean, even in Satoshi's um, early messages, he spoke about the banks doing the second round of um, sort of stimulus. It, it, it's too good to be true that, you know, they just wrote up an entire monetary system. When the real crack started to show, when the game had kind of been, you know, given up essentially, uh, and it's, it, I mean, it, it's just, a, it, it, in some ways, as damaging and as, as, as scary, I think, to some people as this may be, it's also a very exciting time um, to be in markets, to even be in crypto, because the future, I think, the next 10 years are going to look vastly different from the previous. Uh, it's an extremely exciting time to be alive, I think. And the problem is there's people that recognize that. And there's people that continue to believe, well, we're bouncing now off the 200 day moving average. And every other time before now, it's usually been a good uh, purchase point. And I'm like, the 200 day moving average is in essence, a lagging, smoothed out, delayed version of an optimized that you've optimized for a certain set of data that has been a proliferation fiat error, an error as in ERA, the period of, and in that sense, I mean, just let me use this one as an example. Um, some of you may guess who was the originator, but uh, I'm not trying to mock or shame anybody. We all get things wrong. This is, not a, this is not an ego shouting match. It's a conceptual understanding discussion and my frustration with the lack of people to actually conceptually grasp this point. 
you're sitting here and you're looking at this chart. This is a key area. And I've seen the moving average equivalent of this by the same individual that it should be bought. Well, actually, at one point, you were going up like that. You know, and you would have said every time you bought a lot of this bounced on this line that it should be bought. And then eventually you stop going up at that rate and then you go up like that. And then what if, without even being a crisis caller, what if you're now going up like that? And you go down to there. Well, that could be six thousand dollars. Yep, yep. And you know, the, and the, and every and, and again back to your point about Bitcoin was born during this time period of real stimulus and quantitative easing. Yeah, you know, it's a different it's a different ball game right now. And you do have, I mean, you've got the long term regression band for Bitcoin that puts you around about twenty k, twenty four k. You've got the two hundred moving average, but which has historically been um, support. But this time is different. It, 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 to compare any time prior to um, today, it, it's just not comparable, I don't think. And I think this is this is what people need to understand. You know, when have we actually had the failing of a of a, of a fiat system um, take place in markets? And when you talk about the two hundred moving average, which I've looked at, the Nasdaq Composite, typically you'll bounce off there and then you'll just smash straight through it on the next on the next little leg down. Um, when you two thousand eight was a perfect example, and prior to that you know, the dot-com bus. So it doesn't really mean a lot if the conditions aren't warranted. You have things that hold. Nothing holds forever. So let me just ensure that everybody understands that this is really not an ego match. We delivered a commitment of traders indicator that was highlighting where the insiders were buying and it functioned beautifully. And then the data changed and the manner in which it was reported changed. And then institutionals became super dominant and even on their super dominance, um, the old signals no longer worked. We abandoned it. That's right. I walked away like it had turned to turd and I flushed it down the toilet. Because something is valid while it's valid until the feedback you are given says it is no longer ceasing to be valid. And the notion that you will be earn and get something and it is perpetual. You know, that you will have something forever for life uh, and beyond. Uh, everybody else's life is absolutely foolhardy. Something is optimized for a series of data that is relevant until it starts signaling it's no longer relevant and then you look for something else. That is true scientific endeavor. You don't get belligerent and say, why aren't you still talking about your cot indicator? Why aren't you still... The, the guys that are sitting here, they're expecting a slowed up version of mathematically lagging price behavior, essentially a bad version of the price chart that creates signals against the price chart itself. So you're holding up a slowed up version of itself and saying the intersect at these levels on an optimized number that I chose after it made lots of lows now means that has to consistently forever into the future on a perpetual basis continue to be the idealized point where I'll be buying until the system changes. That's why, I mean, look, I've been trading for a long time. People wanted to algoize HVF, they wanted to do this, they want to do lots of clever things. You, you can refine something on data and you can do optimization and then you can do run forward and the data is different and it falls apart. The point of the matter is what, and this is why you have on every major financial that has any common sense, previous performance is not indicative necessarily for future performance. And then I watch guys with huge media channels proliferating how it's again it's on the 200 moving average everyone should be buying the dip and they've been saying buying the dip from uh 55 50 45 42 30 32 i mean 32 30 29 this is definitely a big support 25 uh, and now what are we trading? You're probably trading 20 and a few hundreds. Yep. And the point is our notion and concept of HVF method is tight risk where you are quickly to accept you're wrong and the market must move quickly, promptly and immediately in the direction you expect in a high volatility manner, immediately giving you safety sell and give you high rewards to small risk. Principally, that is the only way I'm interested in trades and investments. So we have been stepped out and out of this for ages. Keep on keeping on is continuation. If something's going down, you should be short or square at most. You cannot be along until you get a reversal pattern of substantial time frame forming on the lower time frame, uh, on the medium time frame, not on the lower time frame, sorry, and to the macros, you don't re-engage. 
You don't want the first 5%. That is blood and gore. I call it like Saw, number five, whatever the movie is. It is pure blood and gore. There's just butchery going on in there. You don't want to see what happens in that box. It's death and mayhem. Give that first five and 10% to those that want to saw off other people's limbs because that's what's going on there. It's a flipping gunfight and a knife fight and a butchery. I don't care for to be in it. I'll see what comes out once they've all washed up. Uh, and that first five to 10%, let it happen. And these people and are just keep by the dip, 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 clinging on. Michael Saylor is in true trouble. A lot of pro products that are DeFi, DeFi orientated are in true trouble. He bet an entire company on this and it counted on the market never coming down. That was a bet on a high beta, high volatile asset in a quantitative easing environment on the basis that you would never have a turn in the debt-based system. He is now realizing the nature and the state of those risks. That is my point and opinion. And this Bitcoin is a better gold. Uh, gold is like a wooden ship. This is a battleship. I said countless times when people were going and they all cottoned on to, um, and, I, and as again, I don't do this from ego. Please, please, we're wrong on lots of shit. Um, but oh, so and so said, I'm trying to remember which was the big hedge funder legend that said Bitcoin uh, is the fastest horse. I know um, I've right. read his books, he's in Market Wizards. Um, they asked me actually to be in their next book. Um, anyway, so the key point is he was saying Bitcoin is the fastest horse. Raul says, I'm in the fastest horse, heavily in everyone, fastest horse, fastest horse. You don't want the fastest horse. One day, the fastest horse is lame and you have no other horses in your stable. You want a stable of horses because it's not about being super fast on one day or even one week. It's about being able to work every single day. It's about being able to ride a horse every single day. The stubborn old Dobbin, you know, the, I love those Shire horses with the, the fur over their hooves. They get up and work every day. They're cold bloods. You've got to whip their ass to get them going, but they'll pull a plow all day long. Race horses pull up lane, do everything. You want a portfolio of horses if the horses are the business because you can't have one horse. It's too narrow and not every horse is for every season. Um, it's like having one car and you go four by four offloading in Moab and then you go racing on a track Yeah, you and, and, you and you're a farmer. You need a tractor, you need a Lamborghini and you need a four by four. Yep. Um, th these are the things and different terrain, horses for courses, if we're staying on the horses the analogy. And the key element here is that people will criticize, listening to Max Kaiser, gold hasn't moved in 10 years. Gold is suppressed as an asset class as much as bonds are upheld. The truth for gold and silver comes out when the debt system fails and they can't hold the ceiling of overvalued abundant supply, never supplied in ever greater volume. The debt only goes up. So if America gets 52% uh, of what they spend in tax revenue, every year they're adding 48% of their expenditure in new debt. And all the old debt is kicking around demanding an interest payment. So think about that year in and year out. And you've got this stuffing that you're putting everywhere in your house. It used to be just insulation for your ceiling to keep it warm. Now you've got it everywhere. You can't even squeeze into the bathroom. You're squeezing the door over. You're drowning in stuffing. Um, and now you tell me that people, everyone should be paying billions for it. No, every house you go to has got stuffing coming out of it. They've got credit card debt. We've spiked credit card debt. I was on a call here on Twitter spaces, actually, it's up there with one guy saying, well, maybe people are just super smart, the wisdom of crowds. You know, they just, they just take in on debt because it's devalued. Not when they're paying 26% on the credit card they aren't. This is a distressed goddamn consumer. Surely it's just down to a distressed goddamn consumer. Consumer sentiment, we went unders. Inflation, we went overs. Inflation to come in at 0.8, it came in at 1%. Consumer sentiment expected at 58 came at 50.2. It's a depression. It's a recession below 50. Yep. 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 What are these people thinking? People aren't smart. That's not the smart money. People who spend on credit cards are not smart money. And it doesn't matter how many you put in a crowd, they don't suddenly become smart. I think it's the I, same I, as I, saying I, I think naturalized debt obligations that nobody can fucking pay. Create a portfolio of it and you alchemize it into gold. No, you put a lot of shit business all in a pit shit and you end up with a pile of shit. <laughs> That's what happens. Um, it's not really, high, and I just sit here frustrated and belligerent, and I sound argumentative. No, I no. sound ranty, and I am. 
because there is a lot of dumb fuckery out there that just simply doesn't perceive the real craziness of the situation that we are truly yep. in yeah and to think only of crypto is 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 to is to worry about whether you had your pedicure on when there's a grand piano uh falling on your head yeah it's the least important part of your concern you should have been stable long ago it's clear it was in we made a marginally higher high at 69 we've said it technically it's been that way for a while in fact you could be making a bunch of money so i mean i made over 350,000 in shorting and I've cocked it up in mm -hmm. shit execution. Um, I should have made 2 million, yep. simple as. Uh, and it's, it's been easy money. The, when you talk about people being being dumb, um, I mean, there is always an element of ignorance, but, 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 but there's also this kind of denial that I think, I, I don't think people know any different, you know, and, and when you, um, if you listen to Adam Smith, really the, the father of modern economics and all this stuff. One thing he really impressed on me was the fact that money is an ideology in many respects. And what this currently is, is an ideolo ideological system started with John Law years ago, and it's coming to an end. And I don't think people under I don't think people actually think that that can happen. I don't think that they think that this, this could be the moment where we move from a fiat system. The monetary system is kind of like, have you seen those videos where somebody backs up a moped to a roundabout and they start revving it and, and the roundabout just starts going faster and faster and faster until eventually somebody flies off it. That's probably where we are right now, I think. You know, s stuff is about to start breaking. It's about to get serious. If you don't understand what's going on, Crypt, I mean, crypto is a deer in the headlights. understands that there's something going to break, but when the moment comes, nobody believes it. This is what I call Stockholm Syndrome. Even people that are conspiracy theorists, it's here. It starts with debt failure. It is the end of money because every money is borrowed into existence. And if the debt fails, the money is dying. And you're watching it happen. It's really that simple. It's a debt-based system and debt is failing. And it's done, it's ended a 40 year trend of strengthening that's allowed you to ever escalate lower interest rates and to have a highly stimulatory environment so that it didn't matter whether you had bonds or equities, you just bought the damn dip. Uh, and eventually that's going to stop working because all things cease. But nobody thinks I'm going to be that guy living at the end of the Roman Empire. I'm going to be that guy living at the end of the crazy fiat system. And that it, it could actually be this year, this half of this year. You could go into problem reaction solution uh, winter as a result of rate spiking. Rate spiking, another key point that comes with this that's really important for people is you need to be long dollars. You need to have cash because when money is being destroyed, even though there's a notional inflation in the commodity level, you need to be long uh, dollars. If I show you the, uh, the, the dollar against, let's just say, uh, the Dixie, for example, the portfolio of the Dixie, and I split the screen and I put the debt on the bottom part. So this is, let's just put the 10 year debt on there. So I get the debt on the bottom. A Bitcoin that's, uh, who's that? Bitcoin Australian dollar. That's I was going to say 29K. I had a bit of a heart yeah, attack then. Huh? I was going to say I should have closed a while ago. <laughs> Bitcoin Aussie dollar. One of my more exotic um, pairs there that I've got on there. So let's just get that debt back up there. Hold on, hold on. Where is he? I clicked and it rolled, the whole thing rolled away from me. Sorry about that. No worries at all. No worries. I mean, this this is all fascinating stuff. It is, it is so key and, and you are... I mean, I've been watching you for years on YouTube. You know, you, you, you've got things absolutely to a T um, when you're talking about macro. Short-term calls are, are short-term calls. You know, it's not, nobody's going to ever get short-term calls 100% right. It's just impossible. Um, but in terms of the macro, you've been absolutely spot on. And it's been a, a massive blessing for me, my audience, to get to come to grips with this. Because now we know, okay, well, look, th this ship could sink. And we'd rather make sure that we're the ones on the lifeboat when that happens. Um, you know, it, I appreciate that. And it's, you know, there's very few people that acknowledge uh, because everybody else is trying to cast themselves as hero. We're not heroes. We, uh, I mean, I'd love to have saved everybody from this eventuality. There's going to be pain. What I'm saying is not a good outcome for humanity, unfortunately. You know, there's no, there's no sugar coating this. I'm assuming everyone's man or woman enough to take a bad, bad news. Because if you look at these two charts, they're absolutely, I'll bring this one down a little bit and the other one a bit up. They're absolutely highly correlated. And this is dollar strength and this is the bonds. So slightly down, slightly down, 
drifting up, drifting up. This is on the same day, same month, slightly down, slightly down, spiking up, spiking up with a drift off, drift off, major run up, major run up, drift off, drift off, up, momentum break, momentum break. This yield here, 10 year yield is driving the dollar. We've said you will have a dollar super spike. The way the system will fail is on dollar strength. Brent Johnson gave it a name. We timed it. We saw it. We called when it would happen. We said he's onto something, but he's too early. The dollar's selling off uh, because of the seven trillion. Guess what? When you print, not just for your country, but half the world, remember dollars are used offshore. There's offshore demand by people not even involving Americans that need dollars. Oil is still largely purchased in dollars. Yes, China, Russia, we know those things are developing. And in the end, it ends up hurting the dollar. But first, you kill the FX emergings. And the yen is going to be crushed and is being crushed. We call that trade USD JPY. I'm known for saying squeezy, squeezy Japanesey. If anyone knows a catchphrase, that's one of ours. Um, and it's coming. And then we're gonna we're gonna win. We're gonna squeezy squeezy Japanesey, and then we'll win with the one uh, next because it's gonna roll into the other import Asian nations. You can't have one guy that gets away with super low currency, and his two has now become cheaper because of the salaries he's paying in yen. It's now a low cost production nation where previously it was a leading first world nation. Um, the same people that said it's had a seven sigma move, the USD JPY, don't see the repercussions of that. We have warned that the yen is the new. Look at this yen versus the Dixie. It's the same story, only it's gone higher. Look at these moves on here. I've changed the bottom chart. This is all driven by the, uh, the, the yield expanding. And this is driving the dollar up against the euro currencies, the pound and everything else. And look at what it's doing to the yen as well. And this All continues. Correlated. This continues. And, 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 and this is the thing that, that crypto people need to understand. US dollar going up is bad for crypto. You Very know? bad. And there's every reason for it to continue going up. I mean, I've only just started diving into the yen as a currency. The demographic, the fact that they've they've uh, put measures to stop the yields from going up by essentially just saying we're gonna buy whatever we're gonna buy as much as possible, or we're gonna buy whatever it takes. How does that you know that that again? Somebody on a roundabout. Eventually, that's it's going complete to go so belligerence. Fast. Yeah, it's complete belligerence. There was uh, Corona, very firm man. He will stand. He will not be shaken. Many widow makers. Let me tell you, the widow maker trades about to become the rainmaker trade. <laughs> it has been the case that if you shorted Japanese debt, it was a widow maker trade because there's tons of it. The law of supply and demand. But you have to wait for the tide to turn, for the trigger and the match to light the hay that's in the barn. It's not going to burn on its own. You still got to wait for the spark. The spark has arrived. The spark has arrived with a passion. And now you're proliferating currency to buy your own debt up to maintain a valuation it doesn't deserve. This is the problem. People say, oh, well, capitalism has failed. Capitalism hasn't failed. Capitalism is about free markets and price discovery. Big ass governments doing irresponsible things, trying to build a wall on the beach to hold back the tide. Now that's fucking stupid. Uh, and that's what's failed. Walls eventually do get knocked over. You just have to wait for a big enough wave and a high enough um, spring tide. Uh, and I this take, is essentially I, the cycle I that we in. I take you're a fan of uh, Australian economics. I mean, yes. I'm recently reading uh, The Road to Serfdom again by Frederick Hayek. And Hayek. He, people like Follow. Hayek, people like Ludwig, uh, Mises, they all... Ludwig Mises, is very good. ...perfectly summed up what was going to happen if you allow government to have too much of a reach in everything. And people... I, I often have this debate with people... They say, okay, well, you know, capitalism has failed. This is more socialist communism than it is capital Kleptocracy. Capitalism. Absolutely. Cacocracy, actually. Yeah. So it Which is the def active definition for, you know, a seized oligarchy that has attempted to manipulate and extend for yeah. the greater enrichment of themselves in a Ponzi scheme so that they will now be part of an Uber class while reducing everyone else to a peasantry class that will be on UBI and you'll all be in it together. Yep. Solidarity, my friend. Crabs keep crabs down in the bucket. Good luck, good luck. Self-policing, ratting each other out, a la Bolshevik communism in Russia, a la the, the same Bolshevik variety that brought communism to China and destroyed a very refined culture and turned them into quite a coarse 
tough culture, go to Taiwan to see what the Chinese people truly are as a sophisticated culture. Ming, the creators of Ming vases and palaces, they were a very refined culture uh, and they were just destroyed. Every nation state, Russians are known for being surly, grumpy and avoiding smiling. This is post-traumatic stress disorder on a grand national scale as visited upon them by a Bolshevik torturing community that butchered Orthodox Christians to the tune of 20 plus million, did the same to the Armenians, the same people. And it wasn't enough to kill them. They violated the woman in most ridiculous ways, uh, sexual and otherwise. Priests had uh, were tortured and nailed to altars. These are, I'm afraid, every time a genocide comes, when these clowns come to town. It is not a positive message. But what can you do about it? And I finish, uh, and I always finish with, Positivity of mentality, take action, take solidarity with your friends and community of like-mindedness, um, work together, be prepared to support each other, pool your skills, don't get small-minded and gossip-orientated and quibbling, everybody brings something in, everyone must contribute, have neighbors, friends, build self-reliance and truly get cash out of this banking system, they're going to bail in they're going to bail in. They're going to write off your money. They're going to give you useless UBI. You should turn it into gold, silver, and it'll probably become illegal and you should lie about owning it because this is not a moral issue. These aren't moral people. These aren't, they can write the laws to an immoral system. You should have principle and morality as, as your guide in these times. And you should be prepared to die on principle and morality. Uh, and if you can live year for year, give yourself an extension lease every year. If you exercise in a good way, be a man of character and try be that man of character. And, you know, we'll all we'll uh, live or die uh, on that uh, premise and then live every day with joy. Look after yourself, spend some money for sure, but also invest. Invest in gold and silver. It's a very, very important. The bridge when you are moving old trains off an old railway line that is now broken, bent and warping onto this new Skylink line of central bank digitalized everything. Let me tell you, the only thing that survives that doesn't get destroyed is, dig is non-digitized assets. Crypto is an on-ramp bridge for them to bring you into, and that's going to kill a lot of people. They're going to hate me for saying it into this new world oh you're just a boomer and you want to you know an analog watch instead of a digital one you don't get bitcoin i get the thing you don't get but i absolutely get bitcoin i absolutely get what bitcoin is and let me tell you the digitization of everything will not serve you in terms of a surveillance finance system analog is good not having a chip in your body your brain your hand is good not being subject to ridiculous laws bailouts uh, disappearing tokens from your wallet, instantaneous taxation is good. Opt out of their money system. Grow all you need. Become totally self-reliant. Barter with like-minded people. You will suddenly not need money, any money, especially that's been poisoned and birthed into an ursary extracting system which gives dominating power to a ruling kleptocratic class. This is a moral, psychological, and spiritual war. It's not just a discussion about crypto. This is the end of a debt-based system you're watching. And you can't turn this thing around. As I've said before, a snowball heading down the mountain, um, you don't stop it halfway down. Uh, they wrong whatever they do now. Yep. Everyone's yep. going to Shanghai Jay Powell. He's probably more sensible than a lot of the ones that came before him. But the point is they gave the hand grenade to him after the 10th second just ticked. And it gets what? It blows up on his watch. But who pulled the pin? Greenspan pulled the pin and held it for five seconds and then gave it it's to like, Bernanke, who turned like yellow potato. with jaundice and quickly shifted it on to Yellen, who went old and got kicked into uh, lefty politics, who quickly handed it to Powell. That's what's happened. And then it blows up in his face and he's the idiot who lost his head and blew, took us all with him. No, no, he isn't. There was no saving the system. This is an acceleration into a slide that is in. They do not have a control over this. The banks are all compromised. Get your wealth out of banks. Pay off your debt. They're going to probably do jubilees. Don't think it's going to be a good time to have debt unless you get it very, very cheaply. Unless you're a billionaire who borrows at 2% because they will make sure they own you. But if you still owe money on tax, you don't get let off. 
Yep, yep. Francis, it's always an absolute pleasure. Can I just get a final comment on, so you think more downside across the yeah, board? Yeah, let's look at Bitcoin and yeah, crypto, just, as yeah, I yeah, say. Just, we, yeah, just quickly. We've looked at everything I mean, else. Let's just do a quick share on Bitcoin for you. Th this is all really useful stuff that people should understand. You know, forget your markets for a second. Understand the game that you're playing, which is life. And understand, you know, wh wh where we're currently at and what are the forces at work. And you're going to do far better at the game. Um, but th everything you're saying is is really a risk off time period. You know, it it's not a good time to be dabbling, I don't think, in markets just yet. Do you see a reversal? Because one thing that I'm certainly looking at, sometimes more than price, is the Fed pivoting and going back to being very um, accommodating and, and, and forthcoming with stimulus. Do you see that as a scenario or, 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 or where are you at with that? We're about to find out in 15 minutes, um, which is why, as I say, I should, I should yep. wrap this and have a look. But uh, this has been a spill. That has been a spill. So what are the levels that we expect a possible rest? This, I'm not, I don't make the biggest store on bear flags, but you had a small bear flag. Yeah, it's not so small, actually. That bear flag target is sitting at 17. You've got the second interim of the original first cup gold nugget, which is around here. That's at 18.8. And you've got this 19.8. Guess what that was? The legacy high of 2017. So there are a cluster of zones here, which could prove significant and you could get, you've seen I've already sketched in there and maybe in pencil, you can just see it. A bear flag uh, there before you go a bit lower. I must warn you though, if those NASDAQ continues to go lower, so that's a range between 19.8 and 17.8, a two grand range where you could get a bit of a pause. But I must warn that if that NASDAQ is still to go lower and we, we shared head and inverted head and shoulders and lots of things with you, this Bitcoin will be dragged lower. You've got a 12K there. Uh, that is the bigger bear flag. That's from the 69 down to there in this uh, level. Let me just de-log that so it looks the same. And you've actually got the original funnel of the first cup gold nugget. That would be a round tripper all the way around. Such is the violence of the possible uh, return you could face. And that would be a, a very sad day to do a full round trip down to there. But these are the levels of significance, 12, 15. And then this cluster here is the next stop. And it looks like you're going to bleed out. I've still got targets that need to be made on the likes of Maker. We've given you these shorts. We mentioned them to you. On this channel, if the guys watch your previous stuff, yeah. uh, Maker. I know, I know quite a few people that were Maker, Tezos, Elrond. You know, there's a few that you've it. given and they've all actually come up like, you know, perfectly, to be honest. Yeah, um, look at that candle there. You can't say it's over when you get a candle like that. Let me just uh, highlight it and make it a tiny bit bigger. That is an inverted hammer. That's an attempt to rally that gets smacked down. Going I'm into smiling. the same meeting in about literally... 13 minutes you know it's very very um well now that we're here together i'm happy to do it with you because i don't think we're going to finish in time we'll do uh -huh. it all together uh, so what are you expecting here by the way what 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 because 75 is kind of up, supposed to be on the card 75 heard, i'm I've, expecting I've, I've heard people say that it's going to rally on 75 i'm like what what why would it rally on 75 but maybe there's something that i'm missing here i've got you i think i think you're me or you that that's possibly our upload speed yeah, because as I've, soon as I've i went to back. share screen um yep so uh what am i expecting 75 is the short answer yep yep um i think uh it would be neglectful on the inflation front if he doesn't but i think a lot of people will be listening to the comments because if he does 75 but he comes out still very very hawkish that's going to scare them even more I expect him to do 75, but say, you know, at any point we need a reverse, we'll reverse a couple of dovish comments, because otherwise it will be seen as too completely neglectful of the stress that's in the debt market system. Yep, yep. But that's a horrible candle on Maker. It goes lower. You're going to run through the 300 level for us. This has just been raining cash on me, this. I believe uh, it. And I mean, I, I feel terrible saying it, but I'm making money. I'm yeah. making money on the tears of buy the dip bulls. And I warned them and that absolves me of it because foolish people will be foolish people and people that don't listen will be people that don't listen. And we all go through lessons and there've been many brokers and other side of trades in my learning years that took my money unrelentlessly and no one wrote me an apology letter, but that's the nature of markets. It's a cool beast. People die. 
This is the method that guys can come and learn and watch us implement. And for anybody here, for anybody that wants to know where you can find Francis, we share it all the time. You can go. There's a link in the description to the Market Sniper. Book a call with him. You're going to speak to somebody that's on his team that has actually done um, the HVF method and is a veteran in it, I assume. Um, and, and you'll get all the information over there. Um, XRP. Absolutely. 14 days money back. We take no prisoners. If you don't enjoy what you're doing and it's not what you think, uh, you know, we want a community of the willing. I warned Hex. I think they've traded under a cent. Yep. I so, truly do. Certainly when that snapshot takes, or the snapshot's already taken place, but when, when it actually gets released, it's, um, XRP is a really funny one. I've held XRP since 2018. And that is basically when I stopped being an XRP army hodler, because I was like, why are you holding this when pretty much every other coin has significantly overperformed it from March 2020 onwards? Yeah, that SEC uh, case uh, spoiled them. Hindered. But, you know, when they eventually get let off that, which I'm pretty sure they will, with very minor, if any, um, you're still going to, uh, it's going to be a different set of market that they're going to come out into. I'm just watching time, six minutes to go, and we'll get the news on to whether it's going to go up or down. I will probably watch the um, the currencies, actually, for more yeah. interest in terms of which direction things will go. What are you but going to be watching there in terms of currencies? The US I'd look at a USD JPY, USD -JPY. because the yen has been hammered and is probably oversold. But if they get what they think, will it sell again? Because that USD JPY is absolutely mooned. I mean, I've said countless times, FX is the new crypto. People come into crypto, they learn about macroeconomics and all markets. They didn't realize Bitcoin was a pair. It's BTC, USD. I'm a pairs trader. I trade in Forex. I understood that from the beginning. Many just thought they were trading Bitcoin. <laughs> they forgot that that actually they're trading a dollar and that thing can move as well at some point. Um, let's get the uh, USD JPY up and keep an eye. So this is kind of, we've got a target of 136. That will be a first breathe target, flicking and flacking on rumors. You mentioned leaks here and there and everywhere. Um, by the way, on the bigger time frame for guys that are new and just hearing about these things for the first time, should have been long over here. This is huge reward. Little HVF fractal in here. You see that green line, the red line? That's your risk. This is how much you're up. So wow. at the moment, this is not a pretty piece of price behavior, but it's typical of pre-news. Yeah. You know, waiting to hear, waiting to hear. You've got a bit of a broadening structure here. Is it going to do it? No, we don't know. We're guessing. We're all guessing. Nobody knows. Ba 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 ba. So this is not particularly pretty uh, as price behavior structures, but. You, you, you could top out and have a down leg if you get uh, only 50 and have quite a severe down leg. Yeah, I've often thought that they could. Do you know what I thought last night? I was thinking to myself and I was speaking to some of the people we got in the Discord and I thought, could, could the Fed just pivot here? Could they just go, do you know what? We're, we're, we're going we're gonna to actually not continue on the, the, the path that we're on. We're not going to continue to raise rates because we're already seeing the economy get in real pain. Could that be a possibility? Not a very high probability possibility, but could that be? No, the fact that the Fed will pivot is an absolute fact. Yes. At some point. The question is not whether they will have to do a pivot. They're going to break everything. Yep. It's a question that they've got a much bigger license to break something than they've ever had before. Yep on account that we are way behind the curve on inflation. Yep. They are essentially fallen asleep and been utterly exposed with their transitory bullshit. And I then tweeted out, peak inflation is the new transitory and the peak inflation has not happened either. So you're not getting a peak either. You're getting continued. And it's been driven by this guy. The global tax that nobody knows is your first global tax controlled by the Rockefeller organization. Oil. Uh, and it's oil. Yep. Yeah, it's in everything. And it, it, I was speaking about this the other day. Oil affects food prices. It affects, I mean, how do you get the food? How do you get your goods and services? Oil is- It's in, in packaging, it's in delivery, yeah. it's in all, everything, as you say. And the, and the, and the element here um, is that if we, look, we can do an RH2 and we've got a beautiful HVF structure here coming already. And if this sells off, it would probably mean the 75 basis points because that'll rain oil back because that's going to kill consumption. 
Yep. So people travel less, holiday less, da 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 da. If they don't get the expectations, the problem is that goes out the top, and you end up on um, what we call uh, a descending megaphone structure on a bull pole, which is technical analysis. So I actually have technicals here for either way on this news. You can go like this, and then you rally like this. Boom, you break out the top of the megaphone, and on you go, just like interest rates. It didn't wind up and do an HVF. It just went. It ripped. Yep, yep. Which yep. is a sign of super strength. But I was thinking, what if it comes off on a 75 down to about 110? And then we end up with a wind-up structure that bottoms out, churns around, rallies again, more inflation still kicking around, and then we go on a major breakout again on another continuation pattern. So the assumption should always be continuation, even if you have a down leg here. So we called this to $1. People, yeah, I remember it. That people was one don't, half of the trade. Uh, as I say, we're not mainstream media. We're not on CNBC. We don't write. We haven't written books and published author and the kind of things that uh, people do. But we've designed and developed HVF method, and we've been one of the most accurate predictors. We called this crash, and then we said, as hard and as fast and as vitally as you capitulate to the downside, you hear me saying the same things, a la rates on the bond market so you will have the same geometry of violence to the upside and we've said 250 dollars oil oh because um, that, was actually, that, that was actually what i was just about to ask you have you got any targets for oil you're calling 250 dollars a barrel it will be in diminished dollars by then okay. because that'll be post dollar pump so that's i would that's not tomorrow that's not next week or next month but uh, i can see energies uh, being the worst part of the inflationary dilemma, yeah, yeah, almost certainly. And oil is the the spear, the tip of the spear. You know, uranium and natural gas—they've pulled back a little bit already. They're a little bit more sensitive to uh, the musings. But we called this grind line break. We said single digits. You're going to fall out the base of a macro falling wedge. Now everybody's drawing the macro falling wedge. They yeah, copied us. Nobody yeah. was drawing monthly charts with falling wedges now i look at people they're all doing it and some of them even putting splitters and things they've seen from us it's imitation is flattery it's fine yep. you don't get paid credit it's fine someone will try uh, steal your shit it's to be expected of course um but this is something we've developed you're at close to real real highs we've blasted 100 don't forget you've nailed and destroyed most secondary legacy highs here the only time you've been higher was for a very short period in peak wealth in everybody's house has just quadrupled over the last seven years and is an ATM and we're all buying a new car every 18 months and impressing our friends and leveraging up and, and extending the mortgage. And that was for one candle, two candle, three, four. Yep. And yep. we're on a monthly. You had four months only that you ever traded on wti higher than the level you are currently at now and the high for that was uh 147 dollars roundabouts you know so you're uh, not yes. actually that and it barely held the day it's not even a, not you didn't even have a close of the month the the last if you want a month close you ever only ever managed 140 uh as a month close yeah and you're at 118 now so and if i do volume by price which shows you how much actually traded at that, that elevated uh, band level. We just do it for the whole boom period to current. You can see there's next to nothing here. Small amount, yeah. These, these are tiny. You take it down to where we are now. This is all little pippy stuff. Very little trade took place at that volume. It's the same amount of how much Bitcoin traded at 69,000. How many of you sold at 69 and how many of you bought at 69? It's going to look something like that. This is where the volume has been. This is the 70% of oil price has occurred between, since this is obviously from uh, February 2002, between the 30 and uh, $85 range. And if I take it in the more recent, because 2000s are now a long time ago, just since the last high, most of the action 
again, you can see for volume, 70% of the volume is 80 to $45, 45 to $80. Okay. You've had very thin. The other 30%, most of it's in the lower bit is very, very thin. So this, even this area here, it's a short spell during 2011 to 2013, mm -hmm. where you were grinding around there, low volume. So, I mean, um, we are at, we are moving into very, very expensive territory and we are holding there. We have candle closes now. We seem, we, we seem to be selling off right now in the crypto market across the board. Oh, so that'll be the 7.5 in. We should have had the news come in. It's 9.04, 1.75. Wow. So consensus showed. So that's that should be boosting the yen. So so so, so the interest rate that they the interest rate is not nine nine oh four, did you say? What's the interest rate they've actually come out 175. with? 175. So this should pull oil down uh -huh. and you are seeing a trade down. This should bring copper down and various other yes. commodities. This should be damaging to the equity markets, depending on how much was already baked in. But yeah. there's nothing like, it's pretty sure that we get 75, that's bad news, we'll price 80% of it in. But once it's a certainty, you still, you still have to price it all in. You've got the SPY a little bit down. So it seems a lot of it got priced in before. It's terrible for NASDAQ. Stocks like ARK, the interest rate hikes, gross stocks, supreme gross stocks, they should be spilling and they're not yet. It's do, just do, a small candle down. I mean, so this tells me this was very well signaled. Yeah. Do, 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 you, do you pay much attention to the euro dollars? Because I'd never even heard of the euro dollars till literally up, 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 up about six months ago. And if you look at the euro dollars, my understanding of the euro dollars isn't great. But one thing that I, I think it essentially represents is interest rate hikes getting priced into the markets. So if the market's hawkish, the euro dollar goes down, basically. Now, if you look at the euro dollars and you overlay a Bitcoin chart onto it, you can see just how correlated they are. Bitcoin literally perfectly, or the Nasdaq, for example, perfectly started selling off when the euro dollar started to come down. I mean, I often invert the euros dollars and put the charts over and you can see just how. And recently, one, one reason we kind of knew you were going to get down to your lower 20s was because the euro dollars just dropped. I mean, it just went, it, it was like somebody was going, we already know what's coming, you know, we're, we're going to start pricing this in. Yeah. And I would say to you, this isn't easy bottoming. If we have a look at, let's just take Tezos as an example. There's that flag. Uh, we can put it back on there. Yeah. If I just drop time frames to say a half hour, this is not easy. This is not bottoming. This is uh, mini inverted HVF structures for further downside. Wow. Yeah. It just spells risk off. I mean, you know, it's not a good time for crypto, I don't think. And I think this gets worse. Do you see a recovery for crypto? It's not the end of crypto. That, yep. Let me tell you, blockchain or some future other mm -hmm. similar, the central bank digital tokens are coming. And yep, that is a hybrid of crypto. It's just a government controlled one. And centralization and domination is coming for all elements. So Ethereum is captured. Bitcoin is absolutely captured. These people that go our belief systems. This is how Bitcoin fixes this. We get away from government. No, you're not. You're not getting away from anything. They're not giving you an ETF. They gave you a futures-based thing, uh, which is a terrible product. By the time they give you an ETF, they'll have to, they'll want everyone's addresses. They'll have everything about you, and then you can get your ETF. And then every time you make a dollar of profit, you'll be you'll be close to real time taxed in due course on anything you ever make. This is a digitization system. It's not freedom. Digitization is global control. AI bots will be sending you invoices, literally, anytime you make a profit online in the digital realm. Real-time taxation will destroy your income as well. Uh, as I've said many times on your program, double a dollar without paying tax, double a dollar and pay 35% tax. It's the difference between finishing somewhere in the 20s, thousands of dollars versus over a million. Um, yeah, yep. yep. Just yep. in 20 years. It's been an absolute pleasure to have you on. Obviously, I'll get this video edited and, and, and chopped up and get it out there. Thank you very much, Francis. It's always an absolute bundle of joy having you on and, you know, really valuable information that we've gone over so far. Can I just mention to of the course. people one more time, the marketsniper.com is the only way to engage with us. This is a really serious event that's going down macroeconomically. 
you should be thinking well beyond. Things will come rushing at you in a shock. You'll be shocked how far gone the system is. It's time to not only build wealth, it's time to really focus on protecting it and how you will manage that. You need to communityize, whether you do it with myself or not. Go to themarketsniper.com to talk to a trader or form your own and develop it with us. Either way, I wish everyone well. Thank you for listening. Um, Godspeed. Thank you very much.